How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Can't complain at all. I like your sneakers. I was just gonna say I like yours. I saw an interview with you and you had on Jays. I think they're like your go-to sneakers. They are, yeah. Okay, so I want to start by having a little bit of fun because we can't really talk too much about this movie. But online, uh, everyone's going crazy about Baby Yoda. So I wanted to know if your character, Kylo Ren, was <laughs> babysitting Baby Yoda, what would he do to him? <laughs> uh, oh my God. Um, what would he do to it? Yeah, what would he do with it? What would he, they do for that day? He let him watch Stinky and Dirty, probably. Okay. That show on uh, Amazon. I mean, I don't need to pitch Amazon Prime, but, <laughs> but <laughs> he'd probably just put him in front of the TV so he can do what he needed to do. Absolutely. <laughs> he'd be a negligent uh, uh, caretaker. Yeah. Uh, again, they're really, they don't want any spoilers, so we can't talk about the film, but I do want to know about your character's arc. There has to be some sort of twist, some sort of things that happen to, to Kylo during the course of this film. When you get to that part in the script or you get to act it out that day, what emotion goes through you? What emotion did you feel? Well, um, I'm with, I mean, it changes with the, with the scenes. As far as overall journey in my first meeting with JJ, he kind of said this arc of this character that um, I really related to. And then for six years, you kind of have it in the back of your mind of where that character starts uh, in the last movie. Nobody knew how it ended. Even when we started it, nobody knew how it ended. But this, you know, the, the, the title of the first one being Force Awakens is something that I really uh, took to heart for him. It, it's not only the force that o awakens for the light, but it's the dark. So, um, uh, and again, J.J. gave me this thing to think about for what turned out to be a six-year journey of how he evolves, which hopefully comes to fruition in, in a way that in this movie. And again, I think it's a testament to the writing that it's not an obvious thing. It's not something that he, he says, uh, but it's hopefully something that the audience feels. Yeah. You said it has been a six-year journey for you, and this is supposed to be the last one in this franchise, in this saga, or whatever this story is. When they yell cut and you hang up this character, what is that emotion like for you? What what is that feeling like? How do you, how do you even do that? You don't. Uh, you don't. I think that Anthony Daniels said something really great in the press conference about being too. You know, it's like being too close to the earth that you don't really get perspective on a, of its scale. And I, you know, I think that's that's very much that's true. As soon as I finished, I had to jump onto a plane and uh, didn't really start to. And, and I still, even now, it's not out yet. So I still have the feeling that they're going to call us back in and we got to do something. It, and then even when it's over, I, I try to let it go as soon as possible and focus on something else. But then, it, you know, uh, and, and also I'm not a very analytical person. I don't yeah. sit back and reflect and attach meaning to things, um, which maybe I should do more. But this, I, um, I, I don't know how to process yeah. it, and I don't know what good it would do by trying to attach meaning to it. When the trailer came out, everyone had a theory about what happened. What's the craziest fan theory you heard about what happens in the Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> I, I don't know them. I, I don't keep a, I don't keep track. Not to be a, have a vague answer, but I, uh, I I don't I'm not up to date of what they are. How are you doing today? Great, thanks. How you doing? Great, great. I want to start by having a little bit of fun. Great. Your character Ray. Yeah. Uh, she is charged with babysitting Baby Yoda because yeah. Baby Yoda has been all over the internet, right? Yeah. What is she doing? What, with him? Yes. Well, I've been babysitting my friend's baby. And what I did was held the baby and read a book. Okay. So maybe I would do that with Yoda. That'd be good. Or I'd be like, because they say that Baby Yoda's sipping broth. I feel like Baby Yoda's sipping tea. So I'm like, <laughs> what's going down in the galaxy, Yoda? Oh, Let's yes. hear all the stories. He's been around. They're holding everything about this movie really close. They're mm -hmm. not letting us see the movie. Mm -hmm. They don't want any spoilers. Mm -hmm. And I know you can't give me any. But I can imagine reading the script and going through the motions of performing this mm -hmm. role, you come across something that's like breathtaking, that's really emotional. Mm -hmm. What emotion did you feel when you read that in the script? What emotion did you have to tap into to perform these actions? I more read it because JJ pitched the film to me before the script was ready. So when he told me, I was like, I'm not kidding for an hour and a half because he basically told me scene by scene what was going to happen. And I was like, <gasps> You got to that twist and was like, <gasps> It's not even, it's not even like one twist. It's like a lot of <gasps> <gasps> moments. Um, uh, yeah, there, there's a few of those. Um, but I guess I also tapped into them because they're surprising to the characters as well. They're not just surprising to the audience members. But it's fun because as an audience member, you're along with the characters' genuine reactions. Yeah. Um, yeah. When the trailer came out, 
everyone had a theory. Everyone thought this. They saw this in the mm. trailer. What's the craziest fan theory that someone said to you? The thing I find funny is that I never really thought about the male-female thing and, you know. But I am like, guys, because uh, a lot of people try and attribute Ray's great qualities to a guy. And I'm mm. like, no. It's like, it's either this person or that person. I'm like, no, she's a human being. Yeah. And she's got her stuff going on. And yes, there's a lot of other things, but we do not need to attribute that to anyone else but her. Absolutely. This role has been life-changing for you. I, I can only imagine how it has changed your life. And this is the final one, mm. for, at least for a while, or mm. if not forever. When they yell rap, uh, what's going? how do you hang up this character? How do you put this character to rest? I cried for some hours. Uh, I slept for some days, danced at the rap party, but it's taking, but it's also that weird thing of like you put it away, but then you're talking about what we did. So I think come December 20th, when everything is done, that will feel like the putting to bed moment, um, which I can't really imagine. I've talked to Gwendolyn Christie about it because obviously Game of Thrones took up so much of their life and she said it's just strange and that you sleep a lot. Mm. So, uh, yeah, but it's hard to imagine. Bro, I know we can't talk too much about this film, so I want to start off with something fun. Mm. Online and social media, all everybody's talking about is Baby Yoda. Mm -hmm. So if your character is charged with babysitting Baby Yoda for the day, what is Finn doing? Uh, try and take him for walks. Take him for a nice walk. He seems to like to walk by himself. He doesn't like to be carried much. I'm gonna stay away from the, you know, the HD TVs, all the valuables, because the guy likes to touch a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, what well, I don't know what he likes to be fed. I might have to catch some frogs or something, some yeah. toad. You know, just chill, man. You know, I'm gonna have the normal human food, of of course. Yeah. And, you know, Baby Yoda does his thing too. That's good. That's yeah. Good. I'm gonna take care of him. I'll be a good father. Be a really good father to Baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> now I know we can't talk about spoilers for this film, but. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming your character has a big moment, like a character arc that we sort of twist and mm -hmm. a coming of age moment. Mm -hmm. When you get to that part in the script, what do you feel? What kind of feelings go through you? Excitement. It's, it's exciting to see your, your I, I guess you take it as your character being treated right, you know, in a story like this, and your character not being lost, you know. Um, so it's exciting, but then also there's like, sometimes the challenge of what you have to do and a lot of this stuff, especially for, for Finn, was quite physical um, and new, especially with the horse riding and uh, um, a lot of the uh, the work with heights and, you know, a lot of running, sliding, dropping, yeah. you know, jumping, crazy stuff. Um, Did you have to tap into any particular emotion to actually perform it? Uh, no, I think I think what is, what is influencing those characters in those moments is the adrenaline, the rush, you know, a sense of power, a sense of ownership, pride, um, you feel that, man. I mean, you you on a horse, man. You better make it work. Yeah. Make it look good. You reminded me of uh, uh, the Old Spice guy. I'm on a horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, over, this is what, been six years in the yeah. making? Uh, this is a life-changing role, mm -hmm. essentially, right? So when you hang it up, when they yell rap, mm. what do you do with this character? Finn has become a major part of you. People dress up like Finn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They essentially dress up like you. So what I mean, is that like for you? I mean, it's part of, a, part of my life. I wouldn't say Finn is a part of me. I would say that, you know, just an actor who kind of like saw a character in a certain specific way and was kind of like, well, this is how I'm gonna portray him. This is what I'm gonna give to uh, a role that's already written. Um, but I think, I think even with, in between the movies, I've been, I've been able to detach, you know, um, it's just not a part of the day-to-day -day life until we're doing, you know, these yeah. press events and all that kind of stuff. So there's a, there's a good balance that I hope to upkeep. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yo, I'm super excited. I don't know if we can talk about this, but I'm super excited about they clone Tyrone. Yeah. Man, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, when do you start? Like, how, how, how is that for you? So, uh, aiming to start in, in February. I'm currently, like, doing research and uh, it's a character detail going in, in for it. But it's, it's been fun. It's going to be dope, you know. For me, I think it was the right move after something like Star Wars for everyone to remember. I, I came from hood black movies, man. That's... That's what I like doing, so yeah. I'm going back to it, but just this time stateside. So I want to start by having some fun, right? Because I know we haven't seen the movie yet, so let's start by having some fun. Um, on Twitter, 
everyone's been posting memes and images of baby Yoda. Mm. So beautiful, right? Absolutely. So I wanted to know, if your characters, C-3PO, Chewbacca, had to babysit baby Yoda, what are they doing? That is a good question. <laughs> uh, I'd probably let first uh, let Baby Yoda do whatever he, it wants to do because you, you kind of gauge what powers it has and if it's in control of those powers. And uh, yeah, just kind of see first, see if it's uh, proficient with the force. Because I'm a little confused whether Yoda and Baby Yoda share the same uh, things in the force and the, the, the same vibes. I think I saw Baby Yoda trying to do a force push on, on video, and it kind of reeled back, so it's got to work that out. Exactly. I think maybe some force push lessons, uh, maybe with some building blocks, like Baby Yoda, can you like the orange one, can you like move it, or the green one? Yeah. yeah. Probably the green one would work. But also, being 3PO, I think we'd have to go into some language learning, mm, exactly. forms of communication, Gaga, goo goo, right. that kind of thing. See how Chewbacca that could take a seat in these lessons as well. Be very, very good. Protocol is not L Chewbacca's Wookie, strong suit. Wookiee thing, yeah, Wookiee exactly. speak, yeah. Wookiee, Wookiees. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Kashiri Wook. Kashiri Wook. That's the uh, language of Wookiees. Okay. Is it? Yes. You just made that up. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so, they, again, they're holding this movie very close. I know we can't talk about spoilers, but. I'm assuming each character has like an arc or something that ha big that happens to them in this movie. When you got to that point in the script or on filming day, what emotion went through you or what emotion did you have to tap into? Total gratitude to Chris Terrier, the writer, and JJ, the brilliant. Um, uh, 3PO has been waiting, <laughs> waiting to have this moment. For, n not that he knew what the moment was, mm -hmm. but when the moment came, I was like, how do they think this stuff up? Nice. Gratitude, that's it. Absolutely. Yeah, when I read the script, I was, I was like really, really excited for, for all of them, but especially C-3PO. Because uh, he gets to, to do something. Be, because, uh, yeah, then there's, uh, but, but I mean, it's, this movie is bigger than just one character. But yeah, but, but we all get this, this excitement when we read the script for the first time. And it's, uh, it's uh, this, this film, like, it really offers a lot of hope and it's really full of uh, fantastic uh, moments, and, and it's, it's the, it, the adventure that we do together. We do it together. That's yeah. the big thing that I really liked. I did actually say to JJ in an email, you know, enough of 3PO being somewhere distant in a cupboard, you know, saying danger, danger, and not being part of the action. I want action. Nice. And JJ, of course, got into it. And it was delightful on the set because everybody gets on uh, in the movie and on the set. So it was like, it was a ton of work, but boy, has, yeah. it, has it come to fruition. I can't imagine. And s since this is the end of the, the saga, so to speak, what do you do when you hung up these characters? Like, is, are you retiring the characters? Are, like, are you, what's, what's happening? No, I don't believe that for a second because these characters, both uh, Chewbacca and 3PO and, and the other characters, they're too good to just let them disappear into the ether. So they're, you know, I'm waiting for the phone calls. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. And see, first see what the film yeah. gives us. And, okay. and, uh, and, uh, but but I, think, uh, I think Star Wars in general will go on in one form or, an, or another. And oh, yeah. uh, as a fan, it has to be so. I won't accept anything else. I, I, need, yeah. <laughs> uh, I need more Star Wars in my life. <laughs> what is crazy is, is most of the cast, including JJ, have grown up watching me being 3PO. I never, and so they know all about Star Wars because they've been watching it. I was in them. I never really got to <laughs> see it that way. Do you know that? Because uh, I knew all the mysteries from around the back. So I had a completely different perspective. Uh, you guys were lucky. Exactly. You realize that. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. lucky stepping into this uh, with, uh, with, with being able, from the outside, not being even born when the, f when the films first uh, yeah, came out. Yeah, rub it in. Go on. <laughs> then uh, telling Harrison Ford that and, and Anthony, and they, they, yeah, it's not the greatest thing to tell someone. I that, can you know, imagine. Yeah, but, uh, but I'm, really, I'm really grateful for, for, for this uh, opportunity. So I want to start by having some fun. Right? Yeah, great. Know, we can't really talk about the film too much yet, mm -hmm. so let's have a little bit of fun. Do it. Baby Yoda yeah. is everywhere on social media uh -huh. right now. So I wanted to know if your characters had to babysit Baby Yoda, what are they doing? <laughs> what are we doing just for fun? Yeah, you're babysitting Baby Yoda. Well, I think I would want to, like, he can, he can lift his own head, can't he? 
Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So then we, I would like, I would definitely like just do a little bit of running around. What I used to do with my nephews is I would like just take one when they were small and then just throw them on the sofa and then take the other one while the other one ran around and then throw them on the sofa. I feel like with, <laughs> feel like with Yoda that would be better because he could like... He would just like, you'd throw them and then he'd like hover up. Yeah, <laughs> and then like float back to you. So we would That's play catch great. with baby Yoda. That okay. is so great. There you go. How about you? I would get in on that. Yeah? I would get on the, 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 the <laughs> yeah. play and catch with a person. Just with baby Yoda. Yeah, just, <laughs> just throw him into the air. <laughs> he's just He's just there. Go on, go on, go on. Yeah. Now, again, I know we can't do spoilers, right? Mm, we can't right. do spoilers, but I do want to know, because I assume every character here has like a big arc or something that they do that's just like amazing, that changes who their character mm. started the movie as. When that moment came up in the script, or when you guys filmed it, mm. what emotion did you feel, or what emotion did you have to tap into? Mm. There was a, there's a point uh, for Jana where she relays her personal history um, that to somebody <laughs> that gave me that gave me chills, um, mm. and that was that was a very cool moment. That's um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like um, it, reading that script is really emotional for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so crazy to be to know that you're part of this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in terms of what my character is doing, I think just realizing that um, this is the end of the journey for all of these characters was really emotional for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's actually leads into my next question because these roles, in a lot of ways, are like life changing. When you get a role like on a big blockbuster where mm -hmm. fans go crazy about these characters, they're like, "You cannot do!" This. They go crazy. <laughs> so I wanted to know when they yell rap on the last day and you hang these characters up which may be forever or may not be forever no Star Wars we don't know um, what goes through your mind as an actress like what what's what are you thinking if you're putting these characters mm. who you know change things for you as a person yeah I, personally I sent up a prayer I was like, Lord, yeah. do you good. Like it's I, all on I, you. I said, I said, thank you to the universe for the experience, and everything after that is completely out of my control. You know what happens for the film, how people receive it. You know, I just mm. you just let let go and let God, because I, yeah. I think uh, mm. if you start concentrating too much on the magnitude of it, it can uh, maybe you drive out. you a little bit crazy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think the more that you can just like let go of the experience and let it be what it was for you. Mm when you were there, yeah. the better off. And I, yeah. Yes. I looked at your Instagram yeah. and I saw that uh, you had a photo with green on and then a couple uh -huh. days later, Beyonce had the same outfit on. Stop, yes. Stop, Stop it. it. Stop, Stop it. it. Are you serious? What? Wait, I need, I need evidence. I can't even. Are you telling me I want the same outfit? Yes, like okay. look at Beyonce at the Queen of Slim. Stop it! Stop it! My heart, my heart, I can't take it because Beyonce <laughs> is, you know, queen. Queen. Oh. But sorry, um, you. you were also a queen. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <Steve. laughs> oh, thank you very much for the time. I'm so I sorry that was like. Did we end on that perfect note? <laughs> Aren't you warm in that? Yes, very. Oh my God. But anything for the cameras. <laughs> I, I, I hear that. I hear that. You are a man sacrificing all comfort. <laughs> very hot. Um, <laughs> So I've been playing a game with everyone because we can't mm. really talk about the film, So, I, but I do want to know your opinion. Because mm. on social media, everyone's talking about Baby Yoda. Yeah. So if JJ, if you're charged with babysitting Baby Yoda, mm. what are you doing? Where am I taking Baby Yoda? Yeah, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> God, I was just thinking about this. But um, where am I taking Baby Yoda? Uh, well, let's see. It would be really weird to take him to a Star Wars movie. He'd be like, what? What is this? Because uh, I'm... Um, what do I do with Baby Yoda? Take him to a I go to the park. Man. Yeah. Let him run, run, run free. Yeah. That's fine. Obviously. It's the worst answer ever. It, this what, what, do you, what other answer did you get? I throw him on the couch, stuff like that. Oh, so my answer was actually fantastic. It was fantastic, okay. phenomenal. I've been asking everyone also about their <clears throat> character's arc, their character's twist, like what happens to them during the film. You're going from film. Baby Yoda to character arcs? Yes, that's okay. exactly what I did. You're amazing. I, that was a pivot. What I did. That was a pivot. It was. Yes, sir. Uh, and I was asking them what emotion they felt mm -hmm. when they when they got to that big twist. Mm -hmm. When you're filming that, right, and capturing it and doing all that, and it's going exactly how you want or not how you want, mm -hmm. what is your what are your emotions trying to capture it in the perfect way? Because mm -hmm. the Star Wars fans are bloodthirsty yeah, animals. It's a great <laughs> it's a great question. It's funny. It doesn't even need to be like a pivot like a, a pivotal moment in the character arc. It could be it could be any moment because everything you're shooting. 
you sort of, you know the intention of the moment. You know, you might not know exactly uh, how it's gonna go, because if you're working with actors that are any good, they're gonna bring something, you know, that will surprise you and challenge you. But it can be any, any scene, and you feel like this is what I know this scene is meant to convey and meant to do. And sometimes when you're there and, and you know, and it's going just exactly and, you know, beyond what you'd expect it, I, you know, I'm almost like giggling behind the camera. I'm like, cause I'm, oh my God, this is the thing. They're bringing it, it's, you know, it's working, it's resonating, it's meaningful. Um, <clears throat> when it's not going the way you want it to, which is, you know, not infrequent, uh, that's when you just start to go, whoa, shit, what am I doing? Like, like, is this even the right thing? What do I, how, you know, what's the, and, and you really start to like, it, when it just doesn't work, you start to question, is this the right intention? You know, yeah. are we doing it the right way? Is it the is it the the choreography of the of the shot? Is it you know, is it, is it what the context of the moment like? And it really is one of those things where you're constantly second, triple, quadruple guessing yourself and trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's it's like with any creative process that you know we all go through. You just try stuff, and when, when it doesn't work, you're like, yeah. why is that not working? You mm -hmm. put this franchise up. You were done with it. Where, for, you were like, you weren't doing another one, and then it called you back. Mm -hmm. And now that it's over, what is it like to do that again, to sort of put Star Wars up again? I just feel, uh, yeah, I know this sounds boring to say, I just feel uh, incredible gratitude and uh, to everyone who you know did all the work they did. At the end of the movie, when you see the, the thousands of names, literally, uh, of people who spent, I don't know how many hours away from their families to work on this movie. I'm just so grateful for all the work that they did. Uh, and I think when you'll see it, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll feel that it's a moving, you know, film in addition to visually and, 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 and you know, technically, uh, you know, a, a, a spectacle, you know, but it is, to me, the thing that matters the most is the, the heart of the characters. I feel like the cast just went above and beyond and yeah. killed it, especially Daisy.